So, we are on to uh, lecture 18. So, for 17 lectures we have uh, devoted on iron making and I think uh, 17, 18 lectures uh, we would be spending on steel making as well uh, and remaining 3, 4 lectures uh, I think I would like to take up uh, to show you how different kinds of problems of interest can be solved in the context of iron and steel making particularly um, material balance, energy balance, thermodynamics and uh, thermodynamic and kinetic calculations. So, on each of these we will take up uh, you know one tutorial or one problem solving sessions and that will pretty much uh, wind up our uh, entire discussion on this iron and steel making uh, course. So, last time when I left you uh, I was talking about or uh, I was giving an historical perspective uh, on steel making and I have uh, narrated uh, you know, that how steel making evolved uh, that the steel making processes are autogenous uh, from hot metal to crude steel uh, what is the kind of uh, change in composition which is of course, uh, not the final steel that I have also indicated and uh, beyond uh, this crude steel production we have another secondary steel making also which really um, controls the final composition uh, and cleanliness of steel. This term cleanliness we will uh, dwell on in great detail. Uh, at when you understand or discuss uh, the key fundamentals of uh, steel making processes. So, and I have shown you through um, a, a, a figure on energy input as well as energy output that uh, the metalloid oxidations uh, does provide the necessary heat which allows us to take you know uh, liquid steel at a temp to a temperature of 1600, 1620 degree centigrade and that leaves some room for us to maneuver during the secondary steel making process, particularly if the secondary steel processing time is not that large, then in that case that temperature high temperature beyond uh, steel's melting point you know 1600 or 1620 degree centigrade where I would say the superheat is about uh, superheat is means superheat means it is the excess temperature above the liquidus temperature that is what is the definition of superheat. So, 70, 80 degrees centigrade superheat can come very handy as far as the secondary steel making is concerned okay, that we will discuss again clarify great later on. So, before 1850 also and I said that 1850 to 1860 uh, is the year uh, which can be, be you know considered to be the beginning that decade is the beginning of the modern steel making process starting with the Bessemer process and I have also told that uh, the classic or the original Bessemer process was introduced uh, as a acidic steel making process. The details of acidic steel making process and basic steel making process we have uh, I have also discussed and I have categorically mentioned today in steel industries there is no process is the acidic process all processes are carried out steel making processes are essentially basic process. So, we may not say um, you know um, you sometimes oxygen steel making process we will not say basic oxygen it is not mandatory for us to say basic oxygen steel making process, but some people do say that. Okay, or basic oxygen furnace. Okay. So, oxygen furnace is fair enough because it is understood that uh, all steel making processes are carried out under basic environment. That means, uh, there is lining is basic, vessel lining is basic which has to be refractory line because we have a liquid which is at 1600 degree centigrade and there is a huge potential for uh, heat loss and we do not want that to happen, we do not want temperature to drop down. So, therefore, high quality refractory lining is essential characteristics of steel making vessels. Okay. Now, uh, around the same time when Bessemer introduced uh, his process uh, uh, the Bessemer steel making process. So, in about 1868 we had uh, the basic Bessemer process which is also known as the Thomas process. So, it is a modification of the original Bessemer process which allows for treatment of basic steel making. So, it could the lining material etcetera could be changed, but it is essentially the same bottom blown pneumatic steel making because that is how that is the converter Bessemer's a Bessemer converter used to look like. So, this is a schematic view and from the bottom you have two years and through the two years you have you know uh, multiple 
air injection slots basically. These are light vertical tubes through which air is injected and we have melt which is contained within uh, the vessel. Okay. So, that is the melt and we have the refractory lining is here. So, that is that is the refractory lining and this may be a replaceable bottom which can be uh, removed and fixed uh, depending on what are the conditions of this. So, Thomas process also use a similar kind of. So, it is also a variety of pneumatic, pneumatic steel making process, but only difference is that the Thomas process has uh, you know basic lining and I have in the last lecture if you remember I have said that my acidic lining is this. So, that is the Bessemer process and then we have So, that is original Bessemer steel making converter. So, Bessemer converter. Steel making vessels uh, are called converters, they convert uh, hot metal uh, into uh, liquid steel. So, this is also a Bessemer converter, but the only difference between this is the lining material is acidic here, the lining material is basic here. Uh, Around the same time, uh, there was you know the uh, introduction of the hard steel making process, Siemens, Siemens Martin process, Martin, Martin process, which is also known as the hard steel making process, hard or open hard steel. Bessemer steel making process one of the major problem was that because air was blown uh, through steel. So, as a result of which what happens uh, the dissolved nitrogen content uh, you know of steel uh, tend to be very very large. Uh, steel can dissolve a significant amount of uh, nitrogen and I think in equilibrium with air uh, which has a partial pressure of 0.79 uh, at 1600 degree centigrade I think it is close to 7 800 that is the value ppm of nitrogen can remain in steel. And we all know that uh, nitrogen tends to make steel brittle, make steel hard and so if you want to particularly you know uh, deep draw steel in that case high nitrogen is not going to be. So, it is not a very pure steel okay, per se, you, could, you have driven out carbon, you have driven out silicon, okay, but you have now uh, much larger amount of nitrogen and of course, oxygen gets dissolved into steel dissolved nitrogen and dissolved nitrogen oxygens are also there. So, it is very, so it is very, it is not quite pure. So, the hard steel making was a process which was I think uh, around the same time it was introduced uh, in Europe and this basically allowed for production of steel without nitrogen okay, having much lesser amount of oxygen. Then the question comes what was the oxidizing agent? The oxidizing agent was if you or iron ore. But that when you replace oxygen by FeO, the net endothermic reaction. So, this now this becomes and then when we have this in oxygen, okay. so oxygen gets dissolved into molten metal and then the molten metal reacts. This is a much more that is the heat that when I have drawn that heat input heat output diagram. Okay, I was taking into account or this is the reactions the heat of this particular reaction taken into account. There is no comparison between the heat produced by this reaction with heat produced by this reaction. Okay. This is uh, you know uh, much uh, I think this is very feebly exothermic reaction and, and this is a highly exothermic reaction. So, when you use FeO your steel making cannot be autogenous. So, but because you use FeO nitrogen will not be there in the process hard steel making process and oxygen value dissolved oxygen value will also go down. Okay. The equilibrium oxygen content as we will see uh, with FeO or Fe2O3 this is the oxidizing agent in the hard steel layer 
we are not interested in these steel making processes okay we do not want to do in great detail because these have virtually Bessemer process and Thomas process have become obsolete these are one or two or five plants you know which may be producing uh, 10 20 or 30 million tons out of that 1.5 billion ton that we produce annually uh, globally okay so these are also I am just trying to you know tell you the history so that you know uh, how the subject really evolved over the years so because you are using iron ore as an oxidizing agent so the net exo you know exothermic reactions have been replaced by an endothermic reactions or weakly exothermic reactions and as a result of which what happens is you require in this particular process uh, supply of external heat so this what on a different kind of a system as you can see so this is an open hearth so the hearth looks something like this 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 is a shallow bath reactor and then basically it has a roof and the gas you know flows here and then the heat is taken out there as a valve here so the hot air will be brick through which it works on a heat recuperative system so when you supply heat and the gas carbon monoxide gas etc that evolves that goes out through the brick then what happens is that you have uh, you know brick checker work which absorbs the heat itself and that hot air can be put back into the steel itself and as I have indicated that there is going to be burners which will supply heat. So that is basically uh, the drawings etc are available in text I think we need not go through it. So what the hard process of steel making because we supply an external fuel because oxygen is not there okay that reactions are endothermic and to minimize to reduce the cost of fuel what happens is there is a heat recovery system. So the exit gas carbon monoxide etc which is produced at high temperature as it flows out through the brick checker work they are called heat recuperators and regenerators okay then what happens is they yield their heat to the brick it is the same phenomena same principle that we use in blast furnace stoves. So after the bricks are getting heated then the air may be introduced uh, from you know and, uh, and the heat can be advected also into the system. So, but per se here what happens is the oxygen that you you know in air that comes in direct contact with the molten metal but in this case even through you are using air in order to put back the heat into the system but this air has very little scope to react with the molten metal which is covered by a slag maybe or you know or at the most the contact may be there at the <coughs> free surface itself. So air agitation and air does not supply heat uh, oxygen to the molten metal it just merely advects the heat uh, and uh, you know makes it available within the furnace environment uh, where heat can get transported to the metal or melt through radiation only. But in this process what happened is as I said that because nitrogen is not there oxygen is not there you can produce a very good quality steel. So the hearth, co hearth steel making was producing better quality steel than the Bessemer converter itself. But the Bessemer converter was making steel much more rapidly because the gas metal reaction was extremely you know uh, quick because there is going to be an intense amount of stirring you can imagine if you blow gases through the bottom then the liquid is going to be stirring and as a result of which what happens the slag metal mixing gas metal mixing etc is going to be extensive and as a result of which the chemical reactions between the or among the phases are going to be expedited. But that scope was not there per se there was no agitation in the bath barring the fact that one or two carbon monoxide bubbles would be rising and they will be you know it is just like in a coca cola bottle you see that the bubble is bursting up once in a while through the free surface and that is the kind of a scenario. So there is not much agitation in the system and as a result of which the rate of reactions were small these are going to be more clear to you when I talk about the kinetics of steel making reaction in one of the forthcoming lectures. So therefore the duration of steel making was quite long in the hard steel making process. So it has its distinct advantage distinct, distinct advantage that it could produce pure steel by not containing you know uh, much nitrogen and oxygen but it required external fuel there is a disadvantage and also per ton of steel the time taken was too long because the kinetics of reactions were slow. On the other hand if you look at Bessemer converter uh, you see that the kinetics of reaction 
is very very fast because of intense slag metal reactions or slag metal gas reactions and also you have <coughs> uh, you know uh, the disadvantage here being uh, that uh, you have uh, you know impurity which is present. Another impurity here uh, a possible problem here is the bulk of the heat. So, the carbon monoxide is producing that carbon monoxide is actually going out of the furnace carrying all the heat along with it. You see that the carbon monoxide bubble will go out through it and that heat is going to be recirculated back in the hard steel making process. But in the case of this, this carbon monoxide bubble or gas is going to be combusting with atmospheric oxygen. The post combustion will take place outside the furnace, but for what use? And the entire heat is going to be lost to the surrounding. So, as a result of which, what happens is uh, that there is not much surplus heat which is available in the system. Okay. The heat economy was not uh, quite uh, quality of steel was not favorable, the heat economy was not favorable, only issue was that yes it is better than the previously existing processes that we could make steel uh, a decent quality steel not a very high quality steel uh, you know um, at a reasonably fast rate. And for quality steel in those days we used to have only uh, hard steel making was practiced which generally gave us, but it is was also as I have mentioned not very economical because of the long process duration. So, the Bessemer process and uh, the hearth process dominated the steel making scenario up to about 1950. Also uh, after you know the world war 1 and world war 2 around 1940s 45. Uh, Another competitor came into the picture that is the arc furnace steel making, electric arc furnace steel making and that was mostly based on scrap because there was a large scale destruction during the world war and huge amount of scrap was generated and there was no means because we do not have heat excess here that scrap can be utilized. Okay. To utilize scrap here we have to use additional amount of fuel. So, people thought why not have a separate steel making process scrap scrap based steel making process and that is scrap based steel making process basically which emerged from 1940 and which is growing uh, at a steady rate uh, become uh, this three dominated the started dominating the steel steel industry uh, steel making field and till about 1950 we had you know all three technologies very popular. Uh, now, uh, there are companies which were using duplex steel making also which was a combination of acidic steel making and basic open hearth process. This open hearth also can be an acidic open hearth process or a basic open hearth process same philosophy as I have indicated in the context of Bessemer uh, steel making and Thomas uh, process. Okay. So, <coughs> we can have for example, we can have a Bessemer converter and we can have an we can have an acidic steel making process here and we can have a basic steel making process. So, combination of acidic open hearth and basic steel making was applied in order to have judicial combination of quality of steel uh, okay, productivity rate, production rate and so on and so forth. So, and actually till 1980s uh, Tata steel in Jamshedpur used to have this technology which I have just now mentioned the duplexing where acid Bessemer and basic oxygen uh, sorry uh, basic open heart process was used to make steel. So, base acidic acid Bessemer process acid Bessemer plus basic open heart that is the meaning and this has. So, you, have, you can imagine that this will produce steel at a faster rate okay. this will ensure quality of steel here you can eliminate silicon okay, and here you, you may eliminate phosphorus also. So, as a result of which high quality steel can be produced. So, that is how uh, you know the steel making scenario grew from for about 100 years from 1850 to about 1950. Even Bessemer when he injected uh, uh, air through uh, his you know few kg uh, clay line pot in his uh, workshop uh, and could successfully produce uh, steel. In the original patent, it is said that he did realize that you know he is injecting air under compulsion because pure oxygen is not available, and he knew very well, even though those days thermodynamics and kinetics was not so well developed, he knew that oxygen is a far more superior agent as far as refining of steel is concerned. Okay. So, all these problems of 
west heat carried by 79 percent nitrogen you know high nitrogen steel all these problems in the Bessemer converter could have been solved had Bessemer uh, you know uh, have the availability of uh, pure oxygen in those days. Pure oxygen if you look at historically pure oxygen isolation was possible But it took almost 20 years before the first steel making oxygen steel making process came you know fulfilling the dream of basic uh, Bessemer process. So, the oxygen steel making I would say not BOF or I would say this is oxygen steel making. Twenty years it took we will study this will say you know why it took 20 years that oxygen is now available you know why it should take 20 years to commercialize an oxygen steel making process to replace and it was not an easy job okay extensive trials were conducted in Europe and America and ultimately the first commercial oxygen steel making process came in the year 1952 that is the year when commercial uh, oxygen steel making process was first uh, commissioned in Austria. So, that we will discuss the reasons uh, you know the, when you talk about the oxygen steel making process or the LD process we will address this particular issue in greater detail and understand that uh, the complexity of the process when we start to inject oxygen into the system directly instead of air and that is what I said if you remember that in blast furnace you know we have two airs available if you in the blast furnace if we put uh, instead of oxygen today we have oxygen available. We do in blast furnace 2 percent oxygen enrichment, 4 percent oxygen enrichment, but an oxygen fully oxygen blast furnace has not been possible. Okay. Uh, the techno economics of the process will be uh, very difficult, uh, different once we start injecting and actually maneuverability will go, going to be very, very problem and we may not at all produce the moment I think it can have disastrous consequence if one tries to just put in pure oxygen in an iron blast furnace and similar you know uh, difficulties people faced. Uh, between 1930 and 1950 when they try to put in you know uh, directly oxygen into molten iron uh, trying to fulfill Henry Bessemer's dream. So, 1950 onwards or 52 onwards the oxygen steel making process made its inroad in the modern. So, this we say as really this is the beginning of the Bessemer's process from 19, 1850. Uh, you know the modern steel making started and oxygen steel, the era of oxygen steel making started from 1950 onwards and as time went on from 1950 to 2020 it is 70 years oxygen steel making you know has been increasing and increasing and helping to phase out the Bessemer process as well as the open heart process almost completely. Today we have only two technologies for steel making. One is called the oxygen steel making or the basic oxygen steel making process BOS. This is an American, there are different American terminologies and uh, you know European terminologies. So, BOS is the name which is used in America, North America, and this is the name which is used in one and the same thing basic oxygen steel making process BOS and BOF is the basic oxygen furnace, they are the one and the same thing. So, this and the electric arc furnace these are the two dominant steel making technology and why dominant I mean say these are you know about 98 percent of this 98 percent of world steel is produced by these, this technology uh, almost 40, 34 to 40 percent of steel is a scrap based process 35 to 40 percent and the balance almost the balance is produced by the basic oxygen steel making process. Nobody today erects the last I think basic uh, Bessemer converter was phased out somewhere around 1986 or 87 and uh, this has a nice there is a nice you know uh, how the phase out growth of the oxygen steel making process uh, took place from 1952 and concurrent you know uh, what do you call uh, <coughs> phasing out of open hearted uh, basic Bessemer process uh, or the Bessemer process took place. Uh, that is pictorially depicted in my book. If you have time, you can go through and then see uh, and understand that beyond 1990, uh, people were all talking about only oxygen steel making 
and not Bessemer still making or Hart still making process. So, in the present context, therefore, in order to discuss the iron and steel making process, uh, steel making process particularly, uh, it is it is not important for us to consider at great de any other in, in any greater detail for these two processes, and we will concentrate mostly on the oxygen steel making process. So, therefore, we have a oxygen steel making converter will also look the same, but the only difference is that the oxygen predominantly is introduced through a top lance, not from the bottom. So, that is how the oxygen is introduced. It is understood because of the large tonnage that not only this converter is going to be necessary, but a steel plant having a converter must have also an oxygen plant attached to it which will supply. So, plus one etcetera is there. So, you will have those raw materials transported put into the converter, you will have oxygen which is put into liquid hot metal and then the refining reaction will take place. Use of oxygen has several advantages. Number one is that oxygen will allow. We must understand the moment we use oxygen, the moment we use air or the moment we use a fuel, all the impurities will start to oxidize, but we will have more and more oxygen getting into liquid metal. Highest amount of liquid metal will perhaps come here, intermediate will come here and least is going to come here, because this is pure oxygen, this is oxygen mixed with nitrogen and this is you know the oxygen potential in iron ore. So, the dissolved iron equilibrium dissolved iron content is directly proportional to the activity of oxygen and the activity of oxygen is maximum here in pure oxygen which is 1 and it is least in iron oxide where it is in bound form. Okay. So, dissolved oxygen is going to be there in any way, but what we understand because of pure oxygen that no heat is taken out by nitrogen there is a surplus heat and this accommodates for G addition of scrap into the system. So, so much of heat is going to be generated okay, because of pure oxygen. So, one can use and the steel plants will generate lot of wastage you know iron scrap is going to be generated in the plant itself. So, therefore, those scrap materials can be added. Also, if you use oxygen, the milk will not get contaminated with dissolved nitrogen as it was happening in the case of Bessemer steel making process. So, as a result of which what happens is we can have tip drawing quality steel and it is possible to bring down carbon to a very low level in the refining process, because the oxygen uh, partial pressure is extremely large. Okay. The melt contains lot of oxygen, highest oxygen and as you will see later on oxygen and carbon have inverse relationship. More is the oxygen, smaller is the carbon content. So, in this particular process because of pure oxygen we should be able to also produce dead soft steel. That means, least amount of carbon contamination is ultra low carbon steel is possible in oxygen steel making converter which is not possible here and also not possible here. So, from various points you know if you take up the economics of the process if you you know process economics thermal uh, advantage you know heat efficiency uh, good quality of steel they are all favorable here uh, in this particular case and therefore, uh, the cost of steel the you know the production rate is extremely faster it is even faster because of high temperature than the Bessemer steel itself. So, therefore, you know you can you can churn out enormous amount of molten metal refined. So, this is a basically refining when you take we say that we put in oxygen into hot metal. So, carbon is eliminated silicon is eliminated that means, hot metal is now refined. So, it is purification of the hot metal. So, this you know the refining reactions rates are extremely fast, uh, because you inject uh, pure oxygen and as a result of which you know 200, 300 tons of material can be uh, uh, obtained uh, steel can be uh, crude steel can be obtained in flat 45 minutes or so. Okay. This is an enormous uh, you know benefit as far as uh, overall plant performance or uh, the process economics is concerned. So, that is why because oxygen injection of oxygen because oxygen is available we have a venue to inject oxygen into the metal. So, therefore, the advantages are so numerous that nobody now wants to think of injecting air nobody now wants to do an hard steel making because it is through this route people can make the maximum amount of money. These are not going to be why they have been phased out 
because they have not been simply they could not sustain competition with the oxygen steel making process be it in terms of money be it terms of in terms of quality of steel and so on and so forth. So, with this you know uh, background and of course, we have lot of scrap which is being generated and the world is producing as we have just now seen you know in last uh, I think two lectures uh, that we produce enormous amount of DRI and that DRI together with the scrap drives the steel making. So, and still arc furnace steel making is also uh, producing comparable quality of steel and not with too offset a process economics. Okay. So, the profitability of steel is also better. So, BOS particularly these converters are typically big converters 250 to 500 tons converter. Many plants of course, has 180 ton, 170 ton converters. So, this is the capacity of the converters 500 ton. Small BOF com converter nobody uses, okay. but you may imagine that there are certain cases where the requirement of material may be less for an automobile industry they may use just a 50 ton or 40 ton material and in that case you cannot produce that you can produce that, but that is not going to be economical. So, you can have arc furnace and arc furnace sizes goes from 30 to over 300 tons that is what is arc furnace size small heat size for small requirement. So, I can an arc furnace cusp, you know a promoter can cater to small as well as bigger suppliers uh, bigger customers on the other hand uh, you know uh, a primary steel making producer or promoter will be able to only entertain only if you go and tell Tata steel that I need you know 30 tons of this grade of steel they will say sir we cannot manufacture that that much uh, steel that little steel because our converter capacity is 120 tons. So, nothing less than 120 ton is a you know possible for us. So, you have to go and find out an alternative customer and in that case your you can bank on electric arc furnace producers you know where DRI and scrap will be used and they have you know can go to different arc furnaces somebody has 30 ton, somebody has 50 ton, somebody has 100 ton. So, depending on your requirement you can approach them and get your steel made and they make steel at comparable prices almost okay. and what they do when they do not produce steel of comparable cost then they tend to produce a specialized products. And if you remember I have written that on one end you can have steel selling at 500 rupees at other end you can have steel selling at 200 rupees a kg. So, it is those high end products or special steels that basically is produced in electric arc furnaces and that makes electric arc furnace you know uh, sustain and compete with the basic steel making process. And we will see that many of the features of basic steel making processes have been integrated into EF making it extremely you know competitive as with uh, or highly competitive against the basic steel making processes. So, these are the two dominant steel making techniques and we will concentrate on these two techniques and tell their versatility or tell their role in the production of different grades of steel. But before that let us now concentrate on that what is what are the refining reactions that we are talking about. So, the moment we put in so, let us we will not talk of arc furnace first arc furnace electric arc furnace steel making will be clear to you once you understand the basic oxygen steel making process. So, we have oxygen which is available uh, you are injecting oxygen into the vessel and that oxygen is interacting with molten metal. So, this is molten metal this is hot metal we are now discussing the principles and this contains dissolved carbon, dissolved silicon, dissolved manganese and dissolved phosphorus. These are our major considerations. I have not written sulfur deliberately and I am saying it again and again so that you register it that with oxygen uh, injected into the system uh, is an oxidizing environment. So, still making is oxidizing environment vis a vis uh, iron making which is a uh, which is carried out under reducing atmosphere. So, these are the impurities which have great affinity towards oxygen okay, and we know that from our delta Ellingham diagram and we will see that 
carbon can go something like this if it oxidizes like carbon monoxide okay and this is carbon plus oxygen reaction to CO then silicon could be somewhere around here okay that could be silicon and oxygen reaction silicon plus oxygen silica MNO and uh, for we can say MNO could be here and iron could be here. So, iron phosphorus MN lines are higher okay silicon is lower and that is the way the carbon monoxide. So, this this temperature this we have seen uh, in, in the context of blast furnace iron making this is about you know um, 1300 1400 degree centigrade greater than 1200 degree centigrade I would say let me just write greater than 1200 degree centigrade where uh, carbon can reduce silica and that is how the silicon manifest in the hot metal itself. So, this tells us that if you put in oxygen uh, that oxygen is going to oxygen will have a great affinity towards silicon. So, this line is it will first oxidize with react with silicon then with manganese then with iron and phosphorus because of the proximity of the lines the way the lines are lower is the line we know uh, more is the uh, stability of the oxides or this essentially indicates silicon oxygen has greater affinity towards silicon than manganese at this particular temperature because uh, if you take any temperature like this and the steel making temperature could be somewhere here okay and then you can see that carbon has a great affinity silicon has <coughs> also a very large affinity. So, silicon will react with oxygen spontaneously or manganese will react with you know this temperatures we are talking about is much larger temperature. So, if you supply oxygen so therefore, uh, they will form the standard free energy of formation uh, will you know is low and as a result of which we should be able to <coughs> the carbon dioxide line I think goes somewhere here is a horizontal line. So, the Ellingham diagram all the oxides you know with one mole of oxygen you have various lines you find that all these lines are quite low and they have they exhibit uh, considerable amount of uh, they suggest considerable amount of the species towards oxygen. So, carbon will oxidize if oxygen is available there is no issue at all silicon will oxidize manganese will oxidize phosphorus will oxidize and along with it the iron will also oxidize. You have also added some line into the process because they are basic steel making process. So, once silicon oxidizes is calcium silicate forms phosphate oxidizes calcium phosphate forms and because iron is also oxidizing. So, I can say that the slack phase will basically contain here calcium oxide phosphorus pentoxide silicon dioxide and FeO in blast furnace if you remember there was not even 1 percentage or 0.1 percentage of iron oxide in the slag, but in this particular case the slag will contain significant part and it follows from the Ellingham diagram that if phosphorus is oxidized and goes to the slag. So, will happen to if you also and how much if you can go there as I have indicated in one of the class from 15 to about 25 percentage depending on the process condition. So, quite a bit of if your loss iron loss is going to take place in the basic oxygen still making carbon. So, now you have carbon. So, the once you supply oxygen that oxygen can dissolve into liquid steel oxygen has great solubility this is a dissolution reaction gas metal reaction. It is possible for carbon to react with oxygen dissolve oxygen producing carbon monoxide. It is also possible for oxygen which I have injected to directly react with carbon producing CO gas. It is also possible that oxygen 
will react with Fe, produce FeO, and then carbon dissolved carbon will react with FeO, producing carbon monoxide and Fe. I am examining carbon oxygen reaction. So, we are talking now carbon oxygen reaction in the bath. One by one, we will discuss carbon oxygen reaction. These are the possible ways in which carbon can react with oxygen 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and all these reactions are possible under steel making condition thermodynamically they are see oxygen will dissolve that dissolved oxygen can react with carbon, but you must understand 95 atoms are iron 5, 4 atoms are maybe carbon and remaining 1 atoms are. So, the probability of oxygen colliding a gas oxygen colliding directly with the dissolved carbon atom is remote, it may first do it you know the gas can collide if at all with Fe and then form Fe, this is possible, this is a gas metal reaction. On the other hand, if you look at this reaction what I have written here. this reaction, the carbon monoxide formation is a slag metal reaction because FeO is present where? FeO is present is an oxide, it is not present here, it is present in the slag phase. So, carbon is in the dissolved metal phase, it is in the slag phase. So, this is a slag metal reaction, this is a gas metal reaction, gas metal reaction and this is the reaction between in the same phase itself both of them are dissolved in water itself. This is a gas metal reaction that is how progressive oxygen gets dissolved. If you consider PO2 is equal to 1 and calculate the equilibrium oxygen content it will come out to be close to 0.2 weight percentage oxygen dissolves in a hot metal as steel iron dissolves about 2000 ppm or 2300 exactly ppm of oxygen into steel into iron at 1600 degree centigrade. Quite a bit of dissolution of oxygen is possible and then you have dissolved carbon with dissolved oxygen or the gas you know bombarding onto a dissolved carbon directly it is meeting dissolved carbon and immediately carbon monoxide. If the gas comes in contact oxygen comes in contact with carbon the Lingam diagram shows that the free energy of formation is favorable and immediately CO is going to so, there are various ways in which and all of these reactions may be occurring simultaneously okay. and of this, this and this are taken to be the predominant that first oxygen dissolves and then the oxygen reacts with carbon this is the one and the second is the carbon because there is an intense amount of vegetation slag and metal are mixing. So, the carbon can also reduce the FeO content from the slag itself. So, as a result of you know this what is going to happen that progressively carbon is going to be eliminated carbon as carbon monoxide is going to escape through the mouth of the converter okay? and it is going to carry along with it lot of heat sensible heat and this may burn here with in the mouth if you do not take care of it then it will produce carbon dioxide also. If air ingression takes place in the passage of the gas so if it comes in contact with the atmosphere the atmosphere contains oxygen so carbon monoxide will undergo oxidation with carbon and form carbon dioxide. So, this is called the post combustion of carbon monoxide and if you can we will study this again if you can control this post combustion and somehow take know control it and make it happen within the furnace itself it is possible to harness the heat of the post combustion and route it back to the molten metal increasing its temperature adding in time more DRI and scrap into the process itself. So, the dynamic kinematic you know kinetics of the two reactions are substantially different for example, one is slag metal reactions the other is uh, your gas metal reactions. So, if you say the gas metal slag metal uh, 
you know once we have this kind of a scheme which takes place you know when you study chemical thermodynamics we dictate the state in terms of pressure and temperature all still making conditions we will set this temperature to be our benchmark 1600 is a typical still making temperature one may be interested at the lower end 1550 at the higher end 1650 1800 1900 is not uh, you know uh, in the range similarly 1400 is also uh, irrelevant. So, this is a typical still making temperature at which we can study you know the kinetic thermodynamics and kinetics of these reactions and of course, the total pressure needs to be specified and most of the time for you know uh, understanding developing understanding uh, of the chemical reactions uh, one can calculate which may not be true all the time at one atmosphere total pressure. If you write down you know this dissolution reaction if you consider that this dissolution reaction is fast and uh, the carbon oxidation reaction uh, is controlled by this, but let us consider first before we talk about the kinetics I think if you write down the KCO equilibrium constant then it is going to be PCO. The Hendrian activity because these are all And carbon, so this we can use our thermodynamics and we can say that PCO by weight percent carbon in the metal to weight percent carbon oxygen. And then we have FC and FO, where FC and FO essentially represents the activity coefficient of carbon and oxygen in the melt. This equilibrium constant for this reaction is can be known from the standard thermodynamic data. Now, we can have you must understand that these reactions can be obtained from various other reactions also. For example, if you, if you, if you imagine if you subtract this if you, if you add these two reactions then you can also find out that a gas metal this this O will cancel out. So, the if you know the free energy of this particular reaction if you know the free energy of this particular reaction then if you sum it up then you will be able to find out that what is this plus this so which is equal to delta G 1 plus delta G 2. Alternatively I can say if you have the free energy of known for this if you have the free energy of known for this you can find out the free energy formation of this by simply applying the Hess's law okay, which is used in the context of adding, uh, finding out the combined heat effects of uh, chemical reactions. So, <coughs> the equilibrium constant for this reaction. So, we are trying to see why you want to see because equilibrium is a state thermodynamic analysis is to be done with respect to a state. So, we are trying to look at that is this reaction approaching close to equilibrium okay? or it is at equilibrium or it is approaching equilibrium or it is far away from equilibrium. So, we will do a calculation then we will make measurements compare the two and that will reveal the picture to us okay? whether the equation is uh, you know. So, let us first find out the theoretically you know if the reactions reaction is at equilibrium. So, K equilibrium K C O can come from delta G naught value of the reaction this reaction whatever delta G 2 is the value this we can obtain from thermodynamic handbook. So, we can find out delta G naught is equal to minus R T L n K equilibrium K C O. So, K C O can be found out. If we can find out K C O and suppose we take P C O is equal to 1 atmosphere P C O is equal to P T is, is equal to 1 atmosphere then we can say that this equation can be written approximately then we can say that this is also effectivity coefficients approximately the 
the region over which Henry is you know on the one wet percentage scale if you write the in that case what happens is there is a linearity. So, this activity coefficients will not appear here. So, I have written approximately. So, we can write down that this is equal to <coughs> wet percentage of carbon into wet percentage of oxygen. Okay. So, this essentially indicates that this is a approximation of this particular equation. So, therefore, what does this indicate if KCO is constant, partial pressure is constant, then wet percentage of carbon into wet percentage of oxygen must also be a constant. We will just stop in 2 minutes time. So, I just want to come to a point and then leave you here. So, therefore, it the analysis tells us that at equilibrium if the pressure is one atmosphere, if the temperature is given to us and the reaction is at equilibrium in that case we can say this is equal to constant or we can say that wet percentage oxygen is this is a hyperbolic relationship wet percentage. And because we know all the, so if you plot delta O and delta C for a given carbon content, we will see what is the equilibrium oxygen content and the nature of the graph from this should be like this. This is our, this equation, the constant is known and if you substitute all the values, this comes out to be 2.25 into 10 to the power minus 5 minus 3, that is the constant value. So, this line corresponds to 2.25 into 10 to the power minus 3 is equal to by percentage carbon. During steel making, it is also possible for you to take samples. You can measure there are apparatus available to you, liquid oxygen determinator, okay, whereby you can you know determine oxygen, you can also determine carbon because there are standard spectroscopic method for determination. So, by taking samples from steel, you should be able to find out that you know, uh, what is the carbon as well as the dissolved carbon and dissolved oxygen in the steel. And if you do this, people have done this by taking out and it shows these are the actual data points, measurements from oxygen steel making converter, the melt composition okay. and it is found that more or less the theoretical relationship seems to be followed, which essentially indicates that carbon oxygen reaction in steel making system is operating close to thermodynamic equilibrium. We will continue uh, this point from this point onwards in the next class. We will discuss all by all reactions carbon oxygen then silicon oxygen manganese oxygen phosphorus oxygen reactions and develop understanding of the thermodynamic part of it and then we will talk about the kinetics of the reaction and that will be far more or equally interesting and tell you that you know why the rate of the steel making process is very very large uh, in oxygen steel making process and so on and so forth. Okay.